who are, thank goodness, amazing. Is there any effective way to put pressure on legislators in other parts of the state, or is that even worth doing? Well, I, I mean, and I'm going to also see if Marcy has any ideas, but I think people really look at the address of, of people who are con contacting them. But I would also say a dollar bill spans geographic boundaries. <laughs> um, and we're going to have, we have some moderate colleagues, uh, I have some moderate colleagues on the Republican side who are some of my favorite people in the building, and I don't want to ever just um, lump them in with all these Republicans. They're, they're a group of people who care more about the issues than their political party, which I think is a great perspective to have. So keep that in mind, that certainly a party affiliation is important, but it's not the most important thing. I had a couple items. First of all, there's a number of legislators are running for the first, you know, for only the second time or that. And if you're going to change a legislator, or that's that's the easiest time to go after it. And when you look at vote, you know, we have 125 House uh, races. There are some of them that uh, there are only four or five thousand votes that are that are cast in those races. And so I, I, I we, we may never have the money to match, you know, the conservative political action committees. But I think we, at time, have the people power in a certain way to move a number of votes. Where I mean, a lot of these races are decided by two, three, five hundred votes, and so um, some of that can be done. Yes, sir. Yes. Could you say something about how the population is counted in districting? It's my understanding that many KU students are not counted as residents of Douglas County. I think that really just depends on where they're, they've, they've formally registered to vote. Um, yeah. um, actually, we have a Kansas census in addition to the U.S. census, hmm. and that allows um, people who are military and students at um, institutions of higher education to select the place that they vote. So it doesn't matter where you register. It matters where you've selected to be counted in the census. So there may be KU students who are registered to vote here, but when they came in their freshman year, decided that they wanted to be counted just during that census year um, in their hometown. And so that um, people thought my district would be more compact because um, Lawrence has grown in, over the last 10 years, but in fact, I expanded into Jefferson County because 7,000 KU students chose to be registered elsewhere. 7,000? <laughs> if, they're, if they're citizens. Yes. A few weeks ago at a public meeting, Bernard Loomis, the political scientist, said that he thought there was a 50-50 chance that Brownback would lose the next election depending on his missteps in Topeka. Say that again. Repeat it. The question was, he heard Burdell and him say that it was a 50-50 chance that Brownback might not be re-elected at um, this depending, point. Depending on missteps. It, depending on, on missteps. Um, um, I mean, I, the reality is that with Docking getting put on the ticket with uh, Paul Davis, um, that they're not going to be so overwhelmed financially. You know, the question is, are the Democrats going to make this race a, a real play? They, they, they can only pick a couple, you know, uh, statewide that they really work on. And will those be Gene Short of running against Kobach and, and Paul Davis? Um, his, you know, who knows what the best polls are or, you know, what we're looking at in terms of popularity or acceptance at this point. But Brownback is not, um, you know, he's in the high 30s, I think, is what, what I've heard. So, um, and, you know, five years, you know, Sebelius saw a path to do this. Um, Carlin did it, you know, Finney. It's, I mean, you know, Kansans have an ability to elect Democratic governors, whereas we haven't elected a Democratic U.S. Senator since 1932. Um, <laughs> So I, I guess I'm hoping that, and, and the campaign finance reports come out January 10th or 13th, and we're going to start getting a feel for who's really in play at that point. Um, I mean, I, you know, I think if Davis and Docking, you know, can put one and a half, two million dollars together, uh, uh, it, that, that's when it starts to get somewhat serious. And the question is, what has happened to the Bill Graves Republicans? 
you know, <clears throat> what, what will Johnson County do, with, you know, which is really kind of a key core of where you can pull out moderate uh, uh, support. Um, and um, can, can you hold your losses in Wichita? I mean, I think th those, those are some of the key questions. Yeah, and I would just say, and then I, and unfortunately I have to, to, to leave. When you're talking about key missteps, I think also it's important on how we're going to frame those missteps, like fighting hard to expand corporate agriculture, deliberately not expanding Medicaid, which was going to be paid for 100% by the federal government, to ensure you know, over 150,000 Kansans that need health insurance, woefully underfunding schools and threatening the education of uh, hundreds of thousands of children. I mean, those aren't, those aren't small missteps, and I think we need, to, we, we need to let people know about those things. Um, in, in addition to um, uh, continuing to push for unconstitutional laws related to women's health or um, uh, extreme laws related to, to guns. So I, those are missteps, in my opinion, and we need to make sure everybody else knows about them and understands the ramifications on their daily life. I just want to real quickly add that um, I comment on the food um, sales tax rebate. I think that was a misstep. Although some of it was instituted, it's only instituted for people that have a Kansas tax liability. <laughs> so if you have a disability, if you are getting money from Social Security, um, you will not get any food sales tax rebate. And I have a question for Paul, so you think that's all. Oh. Thank you all very much for <laughs> Thank you, John. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to ask about the governor's proposal um, to have a 50-year plan on water. Um, obviously, we need to be thinking in the long term. My concern is that we've had a water authority that has um, come up with long-range plans for water. We understand some of the issues in terms of our reservoirs, um, as well as the aquifer. Um, the governor has not put in his budget the six million required for the statutory contribution from the state general fund for the water plan. Um, so my concern is, I, it's great that he's talking about it, is there any action behind that or does this just say, look, I'm interested and kind of hide the fact that we're not getting things done? Well, far be it for me to read the governor's mind <laughs> as to real political motivation at this point. And, and there are a lot of issues to unpack there in terms of what's happening with water at this point. And to the, to the governor's credit and that they stepped up and for a long, you know, for many decades, Kansas had a water policy that basically said you used your water rights or you lose those. And people finally were getting to, you know, the understanding that uh, that was an incredible incentive to, to overuse or misuse water. So it was starting to change. Can I argue with that one? <laughs> the Secretary of Agriculture, Josh Slotty, made that change before Brownback was elected, and Brownback tweaked it. He's claiming it, but he didn't. And um, I'm on that committee, and I asked the reviser that question. I said, is this a change to water policy, or did we make that change last year, and this is just tweaking that? And they actually said yes to that word tweaking, which I was sort of surprised at. Well, and obviously you know a lot better than I do, so um, I've only <laughs> last few years been watching the environment and water policy to the degree that Marcy does, and you know, I mean, it's hard to cover the multiple yes. bases. Of, he does a lot of good work in social <laughs> work and knows better those issues than my do. I mean, and, and the fact is that everything's getting underfunded um, in our state but because of, as our revenues start to decline. So <laughs> in 19, or 2008, we had about a 26 to $28 million state water plan that covered a number of conservation, a number of programs, et cetera. This, uh, coming, this year that uh, we're in now, it's half of that. It's $14 million, mm -hmm. and it may, get, it may go down further at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about dredging of, of John Redmond Reservoir uh, to help with the Wolf Creek water cooling. That will be tens of millions of dollars, and it's anybody's guess where you would even find that kind of resource. And will West Star and KCPNL, which jointly own Wolf Creek, will it be in their rates that will pay for for the dredging of that? This aqueduct 
thing that, that people are starting to talk about, 300 miles from the Missouri River to western Kansas, is tens of billion, you know, 15, 20 billion dollars you're talking about to build it, let alone operate. Um, I mean, the, the governor tried, uh, they pushed through um, some voluntary conservation uh, programs out in western Kansas where water, where, where people with certain water rights can go together and do conservation of water and I think there's, they've got one pilot program up at this point. That's, it's a good direction but it's just, it's, it's window dressing at this point. If I remember the numbers right, I think we have something like 35,000 uh, water rights uh, in, in Kansas, you know, all of them in groundwater districts in the western half of the state. And the vast majority of them are, are over appropriated. We are just we are pumping too much water out of that. We've used a third of the Ogallala, is what K State said a, a couple months ago. And we go another 20, 30 years, we'll use another third of it at, at the rate we're going. 80% of the water use in our state is irrigation, uh, agricultural use. So you know, the simplicity of this is we've got to grow less corn and less pivot irrigation in many parts of this state and start reclaiming some of that to pasture and grass-based agriculture. I doubt the governor is going to be on that platform um, any anytime soon at this point. As we conclude, okay. some of us do have other obligations, but I want to say the takeaway for me, and I hope for some of you, maybe all of you, is we must defeat Governor Brownback. <laughs> That's where my checkers are going to go. That man is dangerous. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul.